So we are in Colossians. Pastor Jason's doing an awesome job walking us through the last few weeks, really dialing in that first almost full chapter um, about who Jesus Christ is, the absolute supremacy, the absolute overarching blessing and gift of life that he is, that there is no need for any other event, there's no need for any other uh, spiritual moment. Jesus is supreme in all of them, right? And so we're, we're shifting a little bit in Paul's letter, okay? So there's a few things, you know, just to give you a little background. So, um, and Jason's mentioned some of this, but just to refresh you. So Paul didn't actually plant Colossia, right? He, uh, one of his students, Apophis did, but he was nearby and he was in prison at the time, right? So he's writing from prison, um, he's heard about their faithfulness, but really he's, he's hearing and trying to express how critical it is to not turn back to their old ways, okay? And to press on and to move forward and to be fully enamored with the mystery that is the gospel of Jesus Christ alone. And to not take Jesus Christ and set him up as one other polytheistic idol, that you can and they did worship, or to turn back and focus all on the law, Old Testament law. But no, that's all been redeemed by the new covenant, right? The blood of Jesus. So a little bit of context there. And we'll start in verse chapter 1, verse 24. So now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may be we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. And to this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. All right, we're going to break this down, but just to continue forward. I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. For my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Okay, so the title of the message is Continue to Live Your Life in Him. All right. I've got three key points that we're going to dial in today, and I have to keep it under control a little bit this morning because these are topics that I am deeply passionate about, okay? Number one, Paul says in verse four, I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments, okay? Do not be deceived. The enemy will do absolutely everything to keep you confused, to keep your eyes off Christ, and more importantly, to let you just look at yourself and begin to idolize yourself and create a new God, your own God, your own personal God, right? Do not be deceived. There's significant wisdom in this. Number two, maturity equals strength, all right? He is the one that we proclaim in verse 28, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. Your strength, your inner strength, your spiritual strength, it's going to come from maturing in your walk in God. Okay, and the last one is 
You know, Paul is, he's really sees himself as the minister, as the father of the church, and he's deeply uh, integrated into serving the churches. So who we look to, who we are inspired by, the things that we take in and we, we draw our hearts close to, they're, they're very impactful in how we handle our lives, right? And how close we keep and stay near to God. And so we're going to talk just a little bit about that as well. All right, do not be deceived. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. Okay, so there is the world's way and there is God's way. There's the Bible and then there's all types of spiritual narratives that are out there, all right? And, and everywhere you go, the enemy will do anything he can to keep you confused, down on yourself, buried in shame and condemnation, anything to manipulate and control you to keep you out of the spiritual game, right? Sometimes, especially lately with our hustle and grind culture, right, which is totally opposite for what God says within rest and the Sabbath for your life, but he'll keep you so physically and emotionally exhausted and you're addicted to work and addicted to fulfilling tasks and things that may be good and edifying in their own right, but they're exhausting you and you're not finding your rest or even having the strength to serve others, right? Or he just puffs you up with pride. And so I want to talk a little bit about like what is just the absolute confusion that the enemy can throw at you and then point you back to where it belongs, right? So in any type of occultism or spirituality or any of these different philosophies and religions, they're going to sprinkle in elements of truth, right, but deny the whole truth. They're not going to proclaim Jesus as the status of himself, and even in the days that we're talking about, they were trying to elevate Jesus to the status of another Apollos or a Hermes or Aphrodite's. Like, that's not Jesus Christ. He is supreme, and there is no comparable, there is no comparison, right? So what I find it funny is that, like, every bit of this you're going to find in the Bible, which we're going to go through, but, like, this is what we're looking for in our culture today. You know, it will turn you 90 degrees from listening to dogmatic leaders to relating with one another, but finding the truth in yourself and accelerating your progress on your spiritual path so that it becomes truly alive and engaging. You will find profound insight, resolve your problems. You're going to discover clear meaning and purpose in your life by breaking the chains of your negative self-belief and becoming that solid source of your own wisdom and inspiration. Man, that doesn't that feel, oh man, that feels good. I got it all right here, everybody. I can find within my own mind and within my own self everything I need for inner healing, everything I need for wisdom and strength's all gonna come right out of me and I'm gonna sit under this tree and I'm gonna hustle and grind and I'm gonna work myself till I'm so absolutely confused I don't even know who's God anymore or if God is me. And that is the state of most outside, non-biblical, non-Jesus-centered teaching in the world today. And it will leave you so broken and so dark and so hopeless and just physically exhausted. But there's a better way. So syncretism, just for a little quick teaching, the combination of two different forms of belief or practices, all right? What's so dangerous about Many of the uh, teachings that you'll see that are not anchored in Jesus is that they're always going to bring in the elements of Jesus, and they'll tell you what a good teacher he was, and they'll tell you what a wise counselor he was, and that, and that um, he was uh, perhaps a prophet from God that brought in words of wisdom, but that's not what Jesus said he was or who he said he was. So we have to take Jesus at his own words not the words of someone who's interpreting it to find little glorious nuggets of goodness and place it into their own self-idealized methodologies and wisdom. That's not 
who Jesus said he was. You've got to take him at face value within the scripture and within the power that he is supreme. Nobody cares, work harder, you know. That's the hustle and grind today. Most corporate leaders, most entrepreneurs are not successful in either their business or their personal life and combine those together as one unless they're anchored in Jesus. You will exhaust yourself if you think you can overcome this world through enough hard work. It is absolutely impossible. It is only by the power of God that you can bring everything together in life and godliness and begin to run the race that, call, that Paul sets out for us, that we set out for ourselves within Jesus, and that God wants to empower you with. So let's go to the next slide. So do not be deceived, right? The only mystery that matters is Christ in you, okay? Your flesh is wired, and this is not your fault. It's how we were made. It's the fallen world that we're in. You are wired to be lied to and to receive it, and you don't need to do that. In Christ in you, faith is how God operates, all right? Not in the ways of the world, but with divine wisdom, divine prompting, and with many ways, a divine intervention in your day-to-day -day that helps you stay inspired and assist you in your walk. You know, and we're prone to want to believe good things. I mean, who doesn't want to be God, right? Like, these are natural things that we have to crucify, which is why Paul and Jesus, they want you to go deeper in your faith. They want you to be rooted and grounded and strengthened with all the knowledge of Jesus' life, his character, his attributes, his nature. He, if he is supreme in all things, then going back all the way to creation itself, that is where you're going to get your you know, vision for your life from. So, and beware the good vibes that come from the universe and that lead to your confusion, exhaustion. Look, that is worshiping at the altar of man, okay? Self-hype, good vibes, uh, the universe sees me. I know, I'm, in, I'm really trying to get the universe to get me this van, you know, I sell vans, so I, I get these guys, I get these guys all the time, they're like, man, I'm really trying to put my energy toward having the universe deliver me a van. And I'm like, for $170,000, I'll give you the universal energy. You'll be right here, buddy. You can drive it right now. Like, you don't need the universe. You know, you need some money. That's what you need. Like, so <clears throat> the point, the, the, the broader point is we're worshiping the creation, okay, instead of the creator. And, and there's goodness from all of us, right? There's goodness in man. I'm not downing on anybody. And you have great hearts when they're reformed in Jesus. And you're going to produce great things. And we're going to get behind you. We're going to rally behind you. And we're going to love you through it. And it's going to be awesome. But you're not going to do that in your own strength. Because we need to worship the creator of everything, including the universe. God is broader than. I think they say the universe because it's just like the biggest thing they can think of. And they could just be okay with that. Right? I think it used to be the sun. But now it's the universe. All right. So I've made up some fun stuff. It's humorous in nature, but there's so much goodness here, all right? So if I was going to write some self-help book titles, the first one would be, and I hope none of these are actual book titles, but they could be, The Anchor of Your Soul, all right? Access the all-powerful God. Unveil your eyes from the lies of evil and man and receive inner healing through the mysterious gospel of Jesus Christ. Renew your mind, cleanse your heart, access self-discipline, and learn to love yourself and others again through the power of God living within you. Right? That. That's, that's, that's good, that's good self-help, right? None of it's from us. It's all from God. The spirit within Learn to master your habits, your hangups, your bangups by accessing the universe's most powerful tool, the resurrection power of the one true God living within you to motivate you, encourage you, and provide you the inner drive you need to live a life of freedom, self-control, and inner strength. That's the Holy Spirit, right? Wisdom beyond the universe. Learn the habits, tools, and methods of some of the Bible's most famous heroes who built kingdoms beyond your wildest imagination, tapped into a deeper understanding of success, 
and learn what not to do through some of the world's most infamous villains and failures, right? It's all here. It's all found in the Bible. And here's my favorite one, because I think I'm clever sometimes. The Sabbath rest and the miracle diet. Live your healthiest life by staying in tune with the rhythms of rest, renewal, and restoration by learning how you were created by God to remain in tune and in season with Jesus and go deeper in your prayer life and inner peace by worshiping God through fasting and the Lord's Supper. We call it communion, right? It's all found in the Bible, and it's free on that table in the lobby to protect and provide an arm and clothe yourself with the information you need to not be deceived. Do not be deceived, okay? Maturity equals strength. Um, Hebrews says in 10, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil, from an evil conscience, our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. That lays out in very simple terms the access point of faith through Jesus, right? Go to the next slide. We're going to skip Hebrews 12 and just jump right in. Next one, please. Yeah, so do not be deceived. You have heard the truth. Now take your maturity, right? Be matured. Be growing in the faith. And, and it's, it, there's a great roadmap to do it, right? So first is boldness in the faith through confidence in your standing with God that we just read in Hebrews 10. Knowledge revealing that mystery of God's plan that is fully realized and completed by Jesus. And then you begin to move forward in your life with strength and reflection and gratitude of the incredible gift of grace. And faith, hope, and love begin to anchor and secure your soul, right? So that's the salvation sort of journey. But Paul's saying, no, we got to press on, right? In Philippians, this is just, it's so good. Philippians 3.12 not that I have already obtained all this or I've already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold for me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting my life that was behind, straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So that's the first step. But then he's saying, no, 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 no. You've got to become fully mature in Christ so that you won't be deceived and that you can move forward and do the love and the good works that we need. And what does that look like? Well, once you begin to walk in maturity, you start to align your behavior and the inner values that you have with those of Jesus. And you're going to become passionate about prayer and intercession for others. You're going to love the church. You're going to want to come and gather with other believers and get invested in the church and in your community. And you're going to be seeking God's will for your life. Lord, what, what, where, why am I here? What is my purpose? What's my ministry? What's my calling? You're going to get into deep intercession of your own life and for the lives of your children and your others and your friends and your neighbors so that we can all work together in union in this beautiful thing called the body of Christ. And you're going to represent it. You're going to be an ambassador for the faith, right? Lifting others up and being inspired by the champions of the past and the champions in your life currently that are helping you walk the race and pursue the goal, right? This is maturity that Paul is speaking of and why it's important to keep yourself from being deceived so that you will continue to live your life in Jesus. Abide, Pastor says, right? Abide, get in the vine, be deeply connected with God. So who inspires you? You know that 
champions of faith are a phenomenal source of strength. The trials, the tribulations, the failures, success. I mean, it's better reading than most novels, right? I mean, the message version here in 32 to 38 is just, I put this in here just to kind of like motivate you a little bit, to go back and look at some of these people, look at some of the lives they've led and watch the journeys where they didn't always get what they wanted or even what God promised, right? But they had this deep drive of faith and conviction to keep moving forward. I mean, it says here, through acts of faith, they toppled kingdoms. They made justice work. Man, do we need that in America today? They took the promises for themselves. They were protected from lions and fires and sword thrusts, turned disadvantage into advantage, won battles, routed, island, routed alien armies. Women received their loved ones back from the dead. Those were who were under torture, refused to give in and go free, preferring something better. Right At the end, it says, not one of these people, even though their lives of faith were exemplary, got with their hands on what was promised, but God had a better plan for us and their faith and our faith would come together as one completed whole under Jesus. And their life of faith would not be complete if it was apart from ours. We're all part of this moving story of God, right? And stories don't stop. They're always progressing to the next step until when Jesus actually returns from heaven and the whole tribulation process begins. We're going to, without fail, keep moving forward in that direction because that is the direction that God has ordained from the beginning. And we're a part of that. And we want to be inspired and connected from it. So just as like, you know, I, these are some men that have been incredibly inspirational in my life. And they, you know, Pastor Chris Hodges, Church of the Highlands from Alabama, where we're from, it's, the church is incredible, you know, the faithfulness that they have. I love his quote here. He says, I can't go back and change the beginning, but I can start where I am and change the ending, okay? Every day is a new day. And every day you can receive, you can choose, do I receive from God or do I receive from man? And renew your mind and wash yourself in the blood of Jesus spiritually and be ready to move forward, right? I can change the ending. And it says, one of John Eldridge just deeply, radically changed my heart when I was a sinful, sinful person before and after salvation. Yes, true strength does not come out of bravado. Until we are broken, our life will be self-centered, self-reliant. Our own strength will be our own. How opposite is that from the guru in you, right? I mean, that is the reality is that we're all crucified. We're all broken under and redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, all right? There is no, there's no bravado there. That is an ultimate surrender to the God who is worthy, who is worthy Right? And people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. John Maxwell, incredible business leader, has been inspirational in my life um, because this is a guy who sits with Fortune 500 CEOs and presidents and massive leaders of Senate congressmen. They all call on him for his wisdom. And he always looks at him and he says, I just wish you knew the hope that I have. Right? I wish you could have the hope that I have. Because he is in Jesus, and it's true. Nobody likes to work for companies and people that don't care about you. We don't care, work harder, right? Absolute opposite. So, and this one is, is even greater, right? The story of your life is the story of the long and brutal assault on your heart by the one who knows what you could be and fears it. There, you are in a war. We are in a war, but we have the victory, and through prayer and petition and thanksgiving and the lifestyle of gratitude, we can overcome daily that which we need to overcome to stay in victory for our lives. So I put these up here just to kind of close it, right? So we showed you some examples of things of the world you don't want to take in. We showed you the Bible of where you do want to get your ultimate source. And then the champions around you. It's okay to draw from one another and to draw from each other 
to be encouraged, to be edified, to be lifted up, if it's draped in the truth of the gospel that is the mystery of Jesus Christ, right? So, and, and I want you to find them. Find sources of truth that are good, solid Christian people that are, understand and can feed you when you're feeling down. And you have them here in this church, right? We have it in each other. And that's how you stay encouraged. It's how you stay fired up. So, if you haven't started your faith journey yet, then I want to pray for you. Um, we want to pray for you and with you. And that Jesus would enter your life. That you would be and start to encounter this faith journey that we're talking of. But if you do know the Lord, then I, I want to pray with you that the Lord will just continue to reveal his mystery and, and pour wisdom and that in this room and, and as you leave, that you will walk forward in maturity and that you will have and find the good works that God prepared for you in advance to do. And so, Father, for anyone who doesn't know you, Lord, I just ask them to just repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into their hearts. Bring them wisdom of who you are. Father, forgive them for their sins. Forgive them for their hang-ups and bang-ups. And God, as they release their heart and their mind to be in service and in love with you, Jesus. God, that you would renew them, that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, and that you would unveil the world, God, that they would see clearly with clear eyes and a pure heart who you are in their life, and that you would walk deeply with them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we just thank you again for this word, for this day. We know that you are king, Lord. You are the lover of our hearts and our souls. Father, fill us, renew us, restore us, and help us press on toward the goal. Help us continue to move in maturity and grow deeper in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Continue. 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 Continue to live your lives in him, in Christ Jesus. That's such a good word. Thank you, Jonathan, for bringing that today. And uh, what we want to do is continue to encourage you to sign up for community groups because this is how you grow. This is how you develop deeper roots along with others. You know, when you plant a tree or when you plant a, a plant or something, those roots go down into the soil and they begin to mesh and connect with others. That's what community groups is all about. You becoming connected with others that can help challenge you to grow, inspire you, keep you accountable. Come on, point out wisdom, help you avoid pitfalls and traps. Anybody have any pitfalls or traps that you've ever fallen into that you wish you had somebody in your, you know, in your life to say, hey, look out for that thing. Get out of the way, steer clear. So that's what community groups is all about, helping you strengthen your faith, grow in maturity, continue on with what Jesus has given you, amen? So go to that back table. Community groups uh, are available for you to sign up for today. We're gonna begin those in two weeks' time, two weeks' time. So there's plenty of time to sign up for that. Also, if you made a first-time decision of faith today or you want prayer for anything, fill out that Connect card. Let us know how we can serve you as a church. We are passionate about... Prayer, and we'd love to pray with you. So do that today. You can also go online to courageouschurch.com slash connect to let us know how we can serve you. Stand your feet, and we're gonna bless you this morning.